Buffalo, John LeMessure, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Keep Young and Beautiful, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guest, Larry Martin. <laughs> Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. 1942 starts well for the Allied forces. British sea power is once again supreme in the Mediterranean. Rommel has been pushed back from the frontiers of Egypt, and the entry of America into the war has provided a tremendous boost to morale. But Britain is not resting on her laurels, nor is the home guard. In a field near Walmington-on-Sea, Captain Mannering's platoon are redoubling their efforts to keep fit by running up and down, carrying on their shoulders a telegraph pole. <laughs> I'm not enjoying this very much. John, John Mannering is... He's took a leave of his senses. I'm sure all this running is not very good for the heart. What are you all grumbling about? When the war's over, if anyone wants a telegraph pole delivered in a hurry, we've all got ourselves a nice little business. <laughs> Don't give up, chaps. You... Oh, you really are doing this awfully well. Oh. 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 Come on, lads. Charge! You know, so they, they really are awfully enthusiastic, don't you think? <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, their enthusiasm usually outruns their energy. Yeah. Right, lads. Oh, We're going to up in the telegraph pole yeah. and let it fall across the stream. Oh, right. Right. Come on now. Oh. Oh. Oh, this should be easy for you, Taffy. Like tossing the cable. Oh. Oh. Pity you're not wearing your kilt. <laughs> Temper or toss you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Naughty temper. Right, let the pole go. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Come on, Crikey. You hold the ball steady, and I'll start shinning across. We are not going to shin. We're going to walk across. Walk across? What do you think we are? Tightrope walkers? It's oh. easy. We'll just hold hands and grip in the pole with our feet. We inch our way across. Like monkeys, you mean? <laughs> Speak for yourself, Joe. Oh, enough of this chatter. Come on now. Now, everybody hold hands. Right, right. That's it. Don't look down. No. Whatever you do, no. look up. Look. Oh. <laughs> 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 What a brilliant idea, wasn't it, to walk across? That'll do, Private Fraser. Old Andy says so. Instead of just him falling in, we all do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Somehow, Wilson, I don't think this exercise has been a great success. No, sir. Been a bit of a washout, really, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you never miss an opportunity to demonstrate that penetrating wit of yours, do you? <laughs> I'll do my best, sir. <laughs> All right, man, come on, come out of that. Let's get back to HQ. Hurry up now. He said, fall out, not fall down. Well, <laughs> I've swallowed so much water, my legs won't carry the extra weight. If my mum catches me like this, she won't let me come anymore. <laughs> Don't worry, Parky. Come back to my place. I'll fit you out with a spare uniform. Ooh. Won't cost you much. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh dear. I must say, sir. Oh, my goodness. It's a relief. To get the weight of one's feet. Good Lord, I was tiring. You're out of condition, Wilson, mm -hmm. that's all. Yeah, well, it, it was rather a long march back here, sir. I was with you, don't forget. Yes, yeah, but you were on your bicycle. Nevertheless, <laughs> <laughs> oh, very strenuous pedaling up some of those hills. Yes, of course it must have been, yes. Oh, oh, it's nice to get these boots off. <laughs> you won't leave them in here, will you? <laughs> No, oh, no, no, of course not, sir. Uh, no, no, no. The men did awfully well, didn't they? Awfully well? Hmm. It's a shambles. 
Jones' section was a joke. Yeah, but they tried very hard, though, didn't they? Well, that won't be good enough when we're up against Hitler and his Prussian butchers. <laughs> we shall have to split the platoon into two halves. Those who are young enough and fit enough, and those who aren't up to battle standards. Yes. Well, I tried that once. Looked rather untidy. How do you mean, untidy? Well, there were two men in one half and 21 in the other. <laughs> I don't mind telling you, Wilson, I sometimes wish that I had some younger men under my command. Yes, well, other people seem to be thinking on the same lines, sir. How do you mean? Well, just a minute. I'll just note it. Yes, here it is. This, uh, this trickle down from the war office. It says, uh, in view of the fact that at the outset of war, many younger and fitter men joined the ARP, leaving only the older and less fit men available for the Home Guard... It might be desirable now for these younger, fitter men to be drafted into the Home Guard and the older men into the ARP. What? Hmm. Let me have a look at that. Well, there it is. Local Home Guard commanders should look into the age and fitness of their men with a view to getting together with the ARP and exchanging personnel. Hmm. This is an outrageous suggestion. I'll fight that tooth and nail. Yes, I do agree, sir, yes. I mean, how can I face, say, Godfrey or Fraser or Jones... Tell them that I have no more use for them and they're now in the ARP. Oh, well, you won't have to, sir. There's going to be a parade and the area command is coming here to pick out which of us ought to go to the ARP and which wardens ought to join us. I don't want to have any Hodges rabble in my unit. Oh, well, I can't be, sir. They, they, they should leave well alone. One just doesn't know where a thing like this would end. Of course not. Well, I mean, take Hodges, for instance. I mean, you, you, you say you, you don't want any of his rabble in your unit. In fact, <laughs> you might find yourself in the ARP. <laughs> and this might finish up <laughs> as his unit. Well, what on earth happen? are you talking about? Well, once they start this sort of thing, I mean, anything can happen. They wouldn't hand my platoon to a man like Hodges. He's a greengrocer. <laughs> What did he know about the army? Well, uh, he was in the last lot, you know. Oh, a different sort of wall together. So he, <laughs> he did come face to face with the enemy, you know, so he, I mean, he looked pretty fit. He looked younger than uh, one or two of us. Meaning me? What? Well, I mean, you're, you're by no means decrepit. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, you're, you're not exactly C. Aubrey Smith. Thank you very much. At the same time, you're not exactly Freddie Bartholomew. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, is that Harrison's? That's right, sir. Harrison's hair pieces. Wig makers for the gentry since 1935. Can I help you? <laughs> well, actually, I'm, um, I'm inquiring on behalf of a friend. <laughs> oh, yes? Yes. He was thinking of uh, purchasing a toupee. What sort of style did you... <laughs> did your friend have in mind? Well, what do you have? Oh, we have quite a range. We do a very nice one, sort of grey and distanguée. We call that our C. Aubrey Smith. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> well, how about something romantic? We do a Valentino with the long sideboard. <laughs> the only trouble with that is it, it is a bit greasy. Or if you wanted something curly, there's our harpo. Oh, no, or no, 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 no. I was thinking more in terms of, uh, of Ronald Coleman. Oh, yes. I think I know the sort of thing you... <laughs> your friend has in mind. Oh, really? If you'd like to come round for a fitting, I'm sure we can fix him up with something. Uh, yes, you, um... <clears throat> you couldn't post it. <laughs> well, yes, we could. We'll need to know the size, of course. Ah, now I do happen to know... But it takes a six and seven eighths in bowlers, if that's any help. Well, it's something to be going on with. How long will it take? Well, if you let me have the name and address, it can be delivered by tomorrow morning. Oh, oh, good. In a plain wrapper, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, it's Mr. Smith. <laughs> Care of Captain Mannering. <laughs> Manager, Swallows Bank, the High Street, Warmington Sea. <laughs> oh, I keep telling you, man, it's a wig. 
through them, son, in here. When come on and walk through this hall, not five minutes ago, I saw a wee cat's cuddle peeking out under the brim of his heart. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come like Captain Manning at all. Precisely. If you ask me, the man's going funny in the head. <laughs> well, I reckon one of us ought to go into the office and have a butcher. Well, I'm not going. I've seen it, I tell you. Well, you go, Pike. You're the youngest. That's not fair. We ought to dip for it. <laughs> well, all right, then. Go on. Right, here we go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a nigger by his toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It's you, Joe. <laughs> no, it isn't. You haven't finished it. O-U-T spells out. You must go. It's you, Pikey. That's not right. <laughs> ah, it doesn't matter, son. No, Joe got the mo. He should go. Yeah, but it wasn't me that got the tea. <laughs> no, did I. I? I didn't know it was any maid. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about the tea you drank, Godfrey. I, I could make you some if you like. That's the quiet one. It's not fair. Joe's not playing properly. Stop your blathering, son. You're the one that's going into Manoring's office, no. and that's an end of it. Right. Now listen. You'll have to find an excuse to talk to him, and you'll need to get yourself lower down than he is so that he can peek up under the brim of his car. <laughs> Joe cheated. I still said the mo should go. Look, never mind about that, Pikey. Look, when you get in the office, now, this is a good idea. Say you think we ought to go to the local regimental barracks and practice on their miniature rifle range. Yeah, all right. But I can't go in yet. Uncle Arthur's still with him. I'm glad you're here early, Wilson. Sit down. Thank you, sir. I've been giving some thought to our conversation yesterday. Uh, didn't you hear me? Hmm? Sit down. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah. well, I'd rather stand, if you don't mind. What's the matter with it? I'm rather stiff, that's all. Aha! I see. <laughs> Yesterday's exercises left their mark, did they? <laughs> well, I have to confess to a slight twinge myself this morning. It hit me in the small of the back, oh. about here. Is yours in the same place, just there? Oh, no, please. <laughs> uh, Marjorie, please don't do that. <laughs> Tell me, sir. Well, I'm sir. rather ticklish, you see. <laughs> what have you got on your uniform? Yes. Nothing, sir. I do believe you're wearing corsets. <laughs> <laughs> My right. Well, actually, sir, it's called a... It's called a gentleman's abdominal support. <laughs> Gentlemen's abdominal support my foot. <laughs> You're wearing corsets. <laughs> You're a rum cove, Wilson. You wear that uniform like a sack of porridge. <laughs> and yet in other respects, you're as vain as a peacock. Okay, it's, it's, it's got nothing whatever to do with vanity. I don't want to risk being put into Hodge's mob, that's all. I, you know, I, I, I'm really quite proud of our platoon. I think you've done a marvellous job putting us all together. I really mean that. So I think it pays, at the moment, not to look any older than one needs. I'm oh, sorry, Wilson. That's it. Very kind of you to pay that little tribute. <laughs> I know that sort of thing isn't easy for a person like you. <laughs> I was pouring scorn upon you, and I had no right to do such a thing, no right at all. I have to tell you that, Tom, I too have taken steps to appear more, well, more virile. <laughs> oh my God, not monkey land. Don't do that. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> as drastic as that. Look, when I take my hat off. There, what do you think of that? Oh! <laughs> Wait! Oh, that's terribly, awfully good. <laughs> oh, it's really awfully good, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> well, be careful. You'll snap your girdle. <laughs> my hat back before you have convulsions. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Sam, you got the men on parade. All right, sir, yes. Right away. Come in. Mr. Manreen. Yes, Barry. May I speak to you privately? Yes. <laughs> well, don't stare at me like that, boy. What is it? 
barracks. I beg your pardon? <laughs> we haven't done it for a long time. <laughs> what are you talking about, boy? Um, we ought to shoot at the targets with miniature rifles. Why are you bending down like that? <laughs> well, I was just trying to see if, um... If my boots are laced up. I see. Are they laced to your corsets by any chance? <laughs> Pardon? Are you wearing corsets? I didn't know we were supposed to. Shall we start again? Yes, sir. Um, the men asked me to ask you if we could do more of it. Excuse me. Well, they surely didn't ask you to get on your knees and pray. Stand up, boy. Sir. Now, just what are you up to? We were playing Eeny Miney. You were what? Very what? Eeny Meeny and I lost. I see. You know, Eeny Meeny, Miney Moey. Yes, yes, all right. I lost and I've been sent in to find out if you've got something under your hat. <laughs> My head, you mean? No, no, between your head and your hat. <laughs> you want to know if you're wearing a wig? Ah, that's it, is it? We'd better go and put everyone's mind at rest, hadn't we? Follow me. Right, now, <clears throat> the point is this, chaps. Uh, Mr. Manning's gone and got this thing for his head. <laughs> we, uh, we, none of us want to get split up and drafted into the ARP. And let's face it, we wouldn't want to lose him. It's true. And we certainly don't want Hodges and Heslot joining us. Blimey, no. You get Hodges in here, he'd start nicking everything. And that'll make two of you. Ah, Jock. Look, Taps, you see, Captain Manning's uh, very sensitive about this, uh, this uh, hair thing. So, please, try not to stare. Right. Just, just treat it as normal, as normal everyday thing. And for right. heaven's sake, promise me, please promise me, don't laugh. Right, fall in three ranks. Fall in three ranks! Do it, the captain says. Come along now. Fall in in three ranks. Get in three ranks. Come on. Fall in three ranks. Three ranks. We've got to fall in. <laughs> we fall in three ranks, eh? <laughs> <laughs> now then, I was particularly disappointed by the turnout for last Sunday's church parade. Now, you may think that church parades are a waste of time, but I would remind you, during Dunkirk, His Majesty the King called the nation to a day of prayer. I think we'll have to admit that on that occasion it worked jolly well. And so I don't think we should ignore this aspect of the war effort. Sorry I couldn't be there, sir. I, I was delivering essential supplies to a company of ATS girls, sir. Couldn't you have waited until the afternoon? I could, sir, but they couldn't. It was knicker elastic, you see. <laughs> they wanted it for the... Yes, I'm well aware people. of what they were. <laughs> As you, Pike, when you're sitting behind you in church, I noticed your hair's getting very long, practically touching your collar. Get a cup. Yes, Mr. Benry. Lord Wilson. Yes, sir? Your hair's untidy, too. Hmm? Not a violin player, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mum said it made Uncle Arthur look rather romantic. Frank, please, please, please. Didn't she? Hmm. I can't see it myself. <laughs> anyway, your appearance as fighting soldiers has become very sloppy. I mention this because it has come to my notice that certain aspects of my appearance have given rise to some speculation and a certain amount of hilarity. Now, I've never been one for beating about the bush, so here it is, straight from the shoulder. I am wearing a toupee. A wig, if you want to make it plainer still. So I'm going to take my hat off. But if any of you fancy a jolly good laugh at my expense, now's your chance. Because I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a good look at it. Are you ready? There, what do you think? Well, come on. I'll say this for it. You certainly can't see the join. <laughs> Speaking for myself, sir, I can't see the point. What do you mean, Fraser? 
Well, it seems a terrible waste of money to have a wig made that makes you look exactly the same as you did before. <laughs> exactly the same. What are you talking about? I think it, I think it takes years off me. Well, personally, Captain Men, I think it makes you look older. Rubbish. How could it? Well, so you see, it's rather difficult for us to judge, you see. The wigs come off with your hats. What? <laughs> comes a calling at this hour of the night. <laughs> it's Mr. Jones and Mr. Godfrey who come a calling. <laughs> What's a mess? We want to talk to you. Oh, oh, you better come in. I say it's a, it's a bit spooky in here, isn't it? Sorry about the candles, but my blinds are too thin for the gaslight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like candles. I... I will think they're much more romantic. <laughs> now, what would you be wanting? It wouldn't have anything to do with tomorrow's parade, would it? Well, it's like this, Jock. You see, Mr. Godfrey and I was looking in the mirror, and we decided that if anyone was going to be picked on to go to the ARP, it'll be us, because we're the oldest. Oh, well, the pair of you aren't getting any younger. Well, I'm not as old as you are, Mr. Fraser. Not as old as you. You're out telling us how you tried to leave General Gordon when he was bunged up in cartoon for the Mad Mahdi. That means you must be over 90. <laughs> well, I was a boy soldier. I see. What did they do? Pin the medals on your nappy? <laughs> no, no, Mr. Fraser, Mr. Joseph. Uh, uh, this won't get anywhere. Now, come on, then. What is he wanting? Well, you remember old Mr. Armstrong? Huh? And that passed away last month, the day after his 97th birthday. That's the one. Well, you made him look not a day over 60. Aha, uh-huh. yeah. It's a skill of hard with my hands. But it's good of you to say so. Well, you couldn't do the same for us, could you? You mean, make you look younger? Yes, sir. Uh, could you? Well, in your case, it'll be a real challenge, and no mistake. <laughs> My sister says here, has an old recipe for an elixir to make one look younger. Well, why don't you have a drama that, then? The only trouble is it takes six months before it begins to work. <laughs> I think we just better rely on Mr. Fraser. No, oh, but the thing is, son, I've not had that much practice on, on live faces. Well, can you do it? Provided... The weather keeps fine, no? What do you mean? Because the cosmetics are used and the intended for outdoors, they're fine inside the sarcophagus. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> the coffin, man, the coffin. <laughs> no, these cosmetics will no stand up to any kind of water. Oh, dear. So, you'll not have to wash your faces tonight, you understand? Well, I wasn't going to anyway. <laughs> Ready are, then. Go into the parlour and lie down on the slab. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, fall in, everyone. Take as you can. Hey, Joe. Hey, where's Mr. Fraser, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Godfrey? The general will be here soon to inspect us. I think they're staying inside out of the way till the last minute. Mr. Mannering will have kittens when he sees them. <laughs> Uh, hold on, here they are. Oh, come on, Georgie, come on. As quick as you can. Come in, Sergeant. No, no, Georgie, no, no, don't stand next to me. Get into racks. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, but without my glass, I'm having a bit of difficulty in finding myself. <laughs> are the men ready, Sir Wilson? Yes, sir. Soon, ready for inspection, sir. Thank you. Now, let's have a look at you all before the general gets here. Pike? Yes, sir. Yes, I don't think there's any likelihood of your being transferred to the ARP. I think you're safe enough. Thank you, sir. Walker. Yes, Mr. Mannering? You'll be all right, too. Right. Now, just a minute. He... Who's this? <laughs> Jones, sir. Jones? Yes. Good heavens. What else have you done to yourself? I tried to make myself more youthful, sir. Youthful? 
The dyed hair and rouge all over your face. <laughs> Look like an aging gigolo. <laughs> oh, thank you very much for that. Very kind of. You look ridiculous. Well, I didn't want to leave you, Captain Manning, nor these brave troops. So Mr. Fraser fixed me up. Fraser, what's the meaning of this? Oh, for, to help to make them look younger. All right, what's the matter with you, Fraser? I, I thought it would help to make them look younger. He doesn't speak very plainly, so on account of his cheeks are padded out with cotton wool. <laughs> Good Lord. He's got makeup on his face, too. Did, did you know about this, what, Wilson? Was, yeah, well, uh, I turned a blind eye. Well, you've no business to. I'm the only one with the authority to turn blind eyes. <laughs> Godfrey, what in the name of goodness have you done? Well, uh, Mr. Fraser's a fluid, sir. It tightens the skin. <laughs> Wilson, this is ridiculous. He looks like Madame Butterfly. <laughs> Can't parade like that. How long does it last, Fraser? Never dug anybody up to have a look. He no. says he never dug anyone up to have a look. <laughs> right, men. I want you to know that I'm very displeased with this ridiculous charade. You can't face the general looking like this. There must be something we can do. Uh, Mr. Mannering? Yes. Uh, would it help if we all put makeup on? Then the general might think we're just one of those sort of platoons. All right, that will do. Permission to be suggestive, sir. Suggestions. Well, so couldn't we face the general, you know, towards the sun, and he'd think he's being blinded by it, and he would be unable to observe us properly? With well, the sky is black as thunder, Jones. Fraser, Fraser, uh, does the uh, does the makeup stuff wash off? He says, yes, it does. Very easily. It only needs a drop of water. Well, there you are, sir. There's your answer. Well done, Wilson. Well, see, I am capable of original thought sometimes, sir. <laughs> Just that I'm not often given the opportunity to do so. Right, Fraser, Jones, Godfrey. Quick, go and wash your faces. Oh, well, it's too late, sir. It's too late. The general's here. What are we going to do? <laughs> There's nothing we can do, apart from pray. But hold and cut. Oh, good Lord, sir, we're going to be drenched. Yes, we are indeed. Quick, Jones, Fraser, Godfrey, heads back. Look straight up into the rain. That's it. Oh, Wilson, in the past when we had it in clement weather for a parade, we'd have described the occasion as a washout. <laughs> This time it's more like a wash off. No, <laughs> 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 yes, oh. <laughs> I see what you mean, sir. Yes, you know, you've always said you had influence in high places, mm. but until until now, I never realised quite how high. <laughs> That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LaMessure as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Down, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Larry Martin, Private Walker, and Michael Burlington as the wig maker. Keep Young and Beautiful was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd and produced by John Dias. (laughs) 